Hello again. In this uh, video, we're going to be talking about combinatorics a little bit more. We're going to be focusing on the different ways that you can arrange things in a different line. Um, do remember that at any time you can pause a video and take the notes that you need if you ever uh, feel the need to do so. And uh, make sure to follow along with the examples as far as you, as well as you can. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple different types of arrangement in this video. The first of which is going to be linear arrangement. So a basic basics example would be if you have uh, three different cars, how many ways can you arrange them in a line? So for example, a nice red Sportster, a yellow vehicle, which I'm sure is very economical, and then the DeLorean from uh, Back to the Future. So if uh, you take a look at those, don't forget your multiplication principle that we talked about in the last video, and that's if event A has M options and event B has N options, then there are a total of M, N combinations. So uh, that will be used, but it's a little different here because of the fact that you have to choose from your cars. Um, so for example, we're going to have three cars, so you have a first car, second car, third car. For the number of options for the first car, I have three different options. The red, yellow, and gray car. All three options. You have to choose one of them, though. You have to choose one, so I'm just going to choose the red car, which leaves only two cars for the second one, the yellow or the gray. I'll go with the DeLorean for the second car in this arrangement, which means I only have one car left, and it has to go in that position. So it's not that I can just say, all right, well, there's three options, but you have three, then two, then one. For every one you choose, the next one in line has to go down one amount. So if we look at that and use our multiplication principle, that's three times two times one, which is three factorial. So your factorial is what allows you to make your linear arrangements. This gives you six total options. In general, you can arrange n objects in n factorial ways. That's always the case if you have you know, a linear arrangement, you have n objects. Because one goes down every single time, you always multiply by one value less all the way until you get down to only one option left, which is exactly what your factorial is. The next type of arrangement we'll look at is the repeated objects arrangement. So for example, how many ways can we arrange the letters in the word Mississippi? And so we're going to go to our paper for this one. Taking a look at the word Mississippi, there are 11 different letters in this word. So if that's all we cared about, we would say that there are 11 different positions. And we have to put a letter in every single one of those. If I use the linear arrangement formula we just talked about, that would be 11 factorial. However, obviously as I look at this, I see I have some repeated objects. These two letters, are, are, there are uh, four S's, four I's, and four P's. And so as we look at that, that becomes very important when you talk about your different arrangements. Uh, two P's in there. There's only one M, so that doesn't really matter. But um, there are four different S's. And so if I were to choose an S as my first letter, and then happen to choose S as my second, perhaps even my third, and perhaps even my fourth letter, if I take a look at those four different letters there, there are four factorial ways that you can arrange them. But they're not any different from one S to the other, obviously, since they are identical. So there are four different ways, or four factorial ways to arrange the S's, four factorial ways to uh, arrange the I's, two factorial ways to arrange the P's. And so I have to have less arrangements than just 11 factorial if you have these repeated objects, because four S's in a row is no different. And that would be the same if I were to uh, space them out. One S isn't any different from the other. So the way we do that is by dividing out those ways that you can arrange those. So you're going to divide the four factorial, another four factorial for the I's, and a two factorial for the P's. And that will give you your actual number of arrangements.
So if you go back, it, since some letters are identical to each other, therefore the number of arrangements must be less than n factorial like what we just talked about. And 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial still gets you a very, uh, a, a lot of different arrangements, 34,650 to be exact, but it's much less than the 11 factorial due to the um, identical arrangements. So uh, the key formula here is that the number of arrangements of n objects where a subgroup of a objects are identical to each other and perhaps another subgroup of b objects are identical to each other is the total n factorial divided by a factorial times b factorial. And maybe there's only one set of identical objects, maybe there's a whole bunch, but um, that's the way you would set up that formula in general. The final type of arrangement we're going to look at is the circular arrangement. So uh, not quite linear, but circular, and how does that affect things that are different? So for, for example, how many ways are there to arrange four keys on a plain key ring? Once again, we're going to go to our paper here to take a look at this, and we have four different keys. And I'll have to name these keys, so for lack of anything better, I'll just call them key A, B, C, and D. Now, again, if I were thinking about this in a linear way, I would have four different spots, four different ways that I could arrange them, which would be four factorial. Four factorial would be you know, the, the number of different arrangements. However, since this is in a circle, a circular keychain in this example, let's just say I put A here, then I'm going to choose key B, key C, and key D. When I think about them being in a circle, I realize that there is a connection between A and D then. So it's not just that B follows A, but then again as I get to the end, A follows D. So this spot and that spot are going to be forever linked. And I just chose those because I started with A and I ended with D, which means in my linear arrangement, this position, the first and the last position, are always going to be linked to each other as well. So for this particular example, what that means then is I can't have four factorial different arrangements. Because if I think about my order here, A, B, C, D, starting at A and ending at D, that's actually the same as B, C, D, A when they are in a circle which is the same as C, D, A, B, and also the same as D, A, B, C. Again, I just chose these two to be linked because that was the first one I started and the end one, but you could think about it differently as you see with these different sort of combinations. So all four of these combinations are exactly equivalent to each other. So if those are equivalent to each other, they can't be different arrangements like they would be in this sort of case. So the way I think of this, if I do consider A and D to be linked to each other, really, I only have three different things that could be arranged. You have the link between A and, B, A and D, you have key B, and you have key C, so really it's one, two, three different things that you can arrange, which would be three factorial. Now how do you get that as a formula? Well, you have four factorial, you see that in any arrangement, four of them are going to be the same, and so that's going to be equal four factorial divided by four. That will always get you to your formula. So again, the first and last objects are actually linked to each other, therefore the number of arrangements must be less than n factorial again. You can't just go back to that linear arrangement. So in this case, 4 factorial divided by 4 equals 3 factorial, which we saw, and that equals 6. So in general, the number of arrangements of n objects in a circle is going to be n factorial divided by n. Or if you want to think about it differently, n minus 1 factorial. So that's the movie on your linear, circular, and repeated object arrangements. Uh, we will follow up with another video on permutations and combinations.